Today I have the opportunity once more to uh, try a discharge on my 7S20P pack. Um, I'm hoping that the 18650s inside all these blocks here have the combined total power of one kilowatt hour when I test it through this EP Ever inverter. Now, of course, there will be losses in this, but I'm hoping the extra little bit of power I've got in this battery pack will give me one kilowatt hour down here on this meter. In the previous video, I repaired a number of fuses here on the Cell 5 block. Uh, I think there was four or five fuses that are broken, of course, making this pack lower than uh, its neighbours. But actually, I've now been through every single pack and I found four or five other fuses which were also broken. Not broken because of an overcurrent situation, I don't believe, but more my mishandling of the packs, those fuses are very delicate so they've all been fixed and I'll probably insert a little video now of me fixing a few of them there's one yeah and there's another one that side's all good another broken one there that's another one done as you can see here by the red LEDs, the uh, DIY BMS is in balancing mode, so all these cells are at the top of their charge. And in fact, if we look at the iPad here, we can see that actually uh, 4.05, 4.05, they're incredibly well balanced. Just one cell at 4.06 currently, and that's why it's now gone into discharge mode, just on cue. So without further ado, let's turn off the solar panel coming into the uh, EP Ever Tracer A MPPT solar charge controller. So there's no more charge going into the pack anymore. Let's turn on the breaker for the EP Ever STI 500 pure sine wave inverter. And we'll turn that on as well. That's got some LEDs on the side showing that that is working. And the meter is now showing, uh, well, zero watts. And uh, we will, of course, put a load on that. And I'm going to put this load on here. It's an incandescent bulb. It's um, according to the packet. Uh, where does it say? Not on that side. Where is it? Yeah, it's uh, 105 watts. Um, equivalent to a 133 watt bulb, because this is a halogen lamp so that is my load just over 100 watts clip that on down there uh, that's not on at the moment um so with the time at exactly uh 12 and a half minutes to 10 let's turn on the load and uh that floods the camera a little but on the meter now we can see a load of 103.1 watts and handily there's a timer going on here as well. So 12 seconds in, 103 watts we can see there. Let's uh, change over to kilowatt hours, 0, 0.000 kilowatt hours. And of course, that will accumulate over the next few hours, uh, which is going to be about 10 hours, isn't it? 100 watts times 10 hours is about one kilowatt. So uh, yeah, we'll check in in a little bit and we'll see how well this gets on. So just 42 minutes in and 0.07 kilowatt hours consumed. I thought I'd check the overall battery voltage, 27.8 volts for my 7S system. And uh, while I'm here, let's use this clamp meter here. This is the uh, Unity UT211B. Uh, set it to DC clamp mode and zero it. And if I zero it nearer to where I'm going to use it, uh, we're pulling 3.87 amps currently, so 3.87 times 27.8, what's that? Now we can take the voltage and the current readings, times them together, 27.8 volts times 3.87 amps equals 107.5 
eight watts going into my inverter, my AC inverter. So now we can work out the efficiency of that inverter. We had 103.2 watts being used by that halogen lamp and uh, 107 point, well, we'll call it 107.6 um, watts going into it. Times that by 100 and that will equal our efficiency. So uh, divided by 107.6 times by 100 equals 95.9% efficient well 96 percent efficient yeah i'm not too 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 disappointed by that 96 percent yeah that's pretty good i'd say so we've just got to three hours there so 0.3 of a kilowatt hour consumed out of my battery bank and uh, all the cells are well following each other pretty nicely i'd say a couple are ever so slightly lower than their neighbors but not by much at all 3.8 volt is the uh, pack average and uh, everything seems to be running quite nicely and of course we're getting to that nominal voltage now as well so um, yeah hopefully that graph's going to tail off and level out a bit um, around the 3.7 volt area and uh, yeah hopefully we're on track for one kilowatt hour. Approaching the halfway point now, 0.496 kilowatt hours, and uh, each different block of cells is still at 3.7 something. This uh, cell 6 is a little bit lower, uh, but the average is 3.737 volts. So, yeah, I think we're just about on track for one kilowatt hour. Just thought I'd check the temperature of the wires in a completely unscientific way. That's all fine. There's no heat in any of these cells. So that's all looking good. Just a little bit of warmth on the inverter. But it has been running for, well, seven and a half hours. Uh, just 0.79 kilowatt hours so far. But yeah, looking like we're going to be on track. So here we are, 8 hours, 39 minutes, 0.9 of a kilowatt hour, and I've got a cell which is under 3 volts, well under 3 volts, and dropping rapidly. Look, we can see that here on the graph. That cell there has dropped quite significantly. Uh, the BMS, DIY BMS, says 2.86 volts. Yeah, and it's dropping so quickly, it's not going to update very uh, fast there. Let's uh, turn off the load. The voltage starts creeping back up on that low cell. So yeah, I've got cell 4, the one in orange now, which is dropping below the rest. And also cell 6 is sagging a little bit on there, isn't it? So once again, I've managed to uh, fail this test. I've not managed to complete 1 kilowatt hour, 0 0.9. How disappointing. So attempt number 2 is another failure. I was 10% short. Well, why could that be? Well, first of all, my solar charge controller remained on. That is going to use some power and it's not needed to be on to uh, use the inverter. So there was a little bit of wastage there, but we're talking a very small amount. The DIY BMS was also on, but I was using that to remotely monitor each cell and each pack. So I think, although that was a little bit of wasted power as well, it was an important thing to keep running. The inverter is only 96% efficient, so there are a few watt hours lost here, but I really was hoping to get one kilowatt hour at the output rather than just the input. But I think the biggest reason for not getting one kilowatt hour out of these 140 cells is pretty simple. Well, I only charged them up to 4.05 volts this morning because that's my normal charging point. I don't go any higher than that apart from once a month when the uh, solar charge controller does an equalization charge and we take them up to 4.1 volts. So these are not ever fully charged and that should make them last a lot longer in terms of months and years. 
Charging these all the way up to 4.2 volts, I think would have got me my extra 10% and a one kilowatt hour on the output of my inverter. But because I didn't charge them or don't charge them that high, well, that's where I think my losses are. But it should allow me to ensure that I can cycle these cells for a lot longer if they're not hitting their maximum quite so often. Anyway, it is still a disappointing end for me. At least I really was hoping to get one kilowatt hour out of this inverter today, but never mind. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Are we going to have some sun tomorrow? <laughs>